So this video is going to cover two things. The first thing we're going to talk about is frame data inside of Ganagen, as far as like what moves are plus what, and what exactly that means. Um, as far as how it works in combos and how it works in pressure. And then we're going to talk about moves in particular that allow for frame traps and how frame traps in Ganagen work, as well as some examples. Recovery cancelling has a lot of different ways that it can be used, um, but the way that it's done is by basically any attack, you can cancel the recovery frames with a movement, either with back or forward in most situations. So if we were to let a full recovery happen for our standing heavy punch, you know, I have to walk up an entire step, or an entire two steps, for me to be able to zempo my opponent. However, if I were to recovery cancel this, then I'm in range immediately for that zempo. So recovery canceling gives you positional advantage. It lets you continue to stay in range where you're able to zempo or apply pressure to your opponent in their face, where you can either use very positive moves or slightly positive moves to influence what your opponent's next decisions may be. Without the ability to stay in your opponent's face and threaten with Zempo, your opponent can just essentially block forever. There's no reason to try to jump, there's no reason to try to press a button. Um, without you being able to force your way in, you're going to have issues. So if you're allowing your moves to always fully recover, it's going to take, you know, a couple uh, moves recovery cancelled to get back into range to threaten that Zempo. And if you're not able to threaten your opponent with Zempo, then there's very little that they have to worry about. So this is why when you're recovery cancel cancelling things and you're staying closer, your opponent has more that they have to think about. And this also applies to things like forward heavy punch, where if you do forward heavy punch point blank, you know, you're pushed all the way back under the timer. But if you don't, and your recovery cancel, you know, you're under the middle of the stun bar all of a sudden. So when you do this, you can essentially cancel it into your walk and then just walk up and zempo them. And this is something that uh, high-level players do quite a bit because of how threatening stuff like forward heavy punch can be as far as frame traps go, which we'll cover later. So essentially when you are using your stuff that you're recovery canceling, you are putting yourself in a position where you're trying to move as fast as possible, right? So if you're just walking after the forward fierce, like people do this all the time, but they don't think of it as recovery canceling. Because if they just do this and then they walk forward, they have to walk forward a lot more. So the point of the recovery canceling, at least in a forward momentum, is to maintain that space and maintain the ability to walk forward quicker than you might otherwise. So when you take this into consideration, moves have different purposes. And depending on the amount of frames that that move gives you, it will either create a positive situation where Zempo becomes easier, where your opponent is able to hit buttons sooner or attempt to throw sooner, which can be hit and confirmed into damage. Or simply you can hit your opponent as they're trying to jump away. This opens Pandora's box though. I've already covered in my previous video the defensive options that you have. However, depending on what your opponent is comfortable with of these defensive options and how they like to approach dealing with Ganagen, particular mind games either exist or don't exist. So frame traps can either be good or bad. Now, recovery canceling plays a big role in frame traps, in pressure, in everything. So it's something you need to get used to. But Ganagen pressure theory is something that needs its own video, and it will get some such in the future. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is crouching short. Crouching short is Yun's fastest button with the least recovery 
of anything inside of Ganagen. Um, it's active on frame three, so a two frame startup with two active frames and a one frame recovery. This move is obscene as on block it is plus 13, and on hit it's guaranteed at least plus 14 on standing and plus 15 on crouchers. So if you're recovery canceling this and you're able to stay, you know, at the correct cadence to just keep going in and in and in, you can keep them in block stun until you're ready to let them out so that you can zempa them. And that's an incredibly important tool. This move, however, does not technically combo into itself as a chain. So, a chain would be standing medium punch crouch light kick. Right? But if you hit crouching light kick and then you immediately hit it again, like this, it's not chaining into itself. So you actually have to wait for the move to recover or recovery cancel it with a direction in order to make it come out faster. So it does combo into itself, but it's at a very particular timing and it's technically a link inside of Ganagen. So understanding that this move is not technically cancelable is very important because the move actually has to recover before you can press a button. If you just sort of mash the standing medium punch here as fast as possible or hit the standing medium punch here as fast as possible, it's not coming out. And it's the same thing with all the other moves. So you need to add a very, very, very slight delay or that recovery cancel regardless of the move that you're using. This move combos into close standing medium punch, far standing medium punch, far heavy punch, crouching medium kick, forward fierce. You can even combo it into sweep if you want, you know, crouching medium punch, Essentially every button it can combo into, but it is technically a link. So now we have to take a look at the positioning that you're put at if you recovery cancel and if you don't. So if you are point blank and you do not recovery cancel, Yun's foot basically covers Ken's toes. Now, if you recovery cancel, you can start to see Ken's toes peek out. And if you, you know, manage to get it perfect, basically half of his foot is visible. So the pushback is based 100% on if you are recovery canceling it or not. And certain characters, you can not recovery cancel and hit them with three of them. And other characters you cannot, like Ken. Where if you want to continue, you have to do that micro step forward. And this is important against some characters because the further you are away, you have to understand what becomes available. Far light kick only really combos into crouching medium kick or far fierce. Um, or you can uh, do far light kick into walk forward. And this is another important part of this move. Is as you can see here, when you're very far away, you still have time to walk forward for half of a step before you're required to press a button to combo. And that's one of the hardest things to get used to when confirming inside of Ganesian with this move. So the further you are away with this move, the harder it is to actually get its combo, right? But as you can see here, even though that far medium punch originally whiffed at the same spacing with that recovery cancel, you can get that far uh, medium punch to hit which means that you can get a confirm into whatever. So outside of being very far away and essentially being forced into something like this or Daipan loop or just straight doing forward fierce um, off of it, you don't really have a whole lot of uh, decisions that you can make, although all of these decisions from far away are very profitable and they're all used. So just because you're far away with this button doesn't mean that it's not good. Because you're plus 13, being far away means that because of that recovery cancel, you can easily get in 
or you can use the other moves in your arsenal to allow you to change how you're pressuring your opponent or the situation that you're showing them. The next move to talk about is Crouching Jab. Now, Crouching Jab isn't used as much as some other buttons, but it has very similar frame data to Crouching Short. Crouching Jab is two frame startup, so it's active on frame three. It is active for two frames, and it has a recovery of one frame. Extremely strong. Now, this move is also exactly the same positive frames, so plus 13 on block, plus 14 on hit, and against a crouching opponent, it's plus 15 on hit. Now, crouching jab in general has the downside of it being high and low parryable. So if you are doing Ganesian pressure, your opponent can red parry high or low. Or, if you're going for a delay in your string to leave a gap intentionally to make your opponent try to jump or press a button or something, this button is high and low parryable. So while it has very similar frame data, there's very little reason to use this as opposed to this. As you can see here from the base even outside of Ganesian, Crouching Jab has a further pushback than Crouching Light Kick. So inside of Ganesian, Crouching Jab puts you at essentially the same spacing as Crouching Light Kick. So when going for this particular move, there is almost no discernible difference between the two, but one of them is a higher risk because it is high and low parryable. So if there is no benefit as far as pushback goes, the reason to use this becomes smaller and smaller in comparison to crouching short. But it doesn't mean that it can never be used or that it should never be used. Just there are inherent risks to doing so. So when you end up recovery canceling this, it's the exact same thing as crouching like it. Now, the hitbox for this is different than crouching leg kick, right? This is going to put your opponent into a uh, proximity guard in a situation that crouching light kick may not. So if I were to take that step forward, as you can see here, even against a standing Ken, that forces a situation where they're forced to block, whereas the crouching light kick hits Ken. So, right? Short, 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 jab is a whiff. So, short, short, jab. So it's a proximity guard move that you can use at specific distances where crouching light kick is at its max distance. And if you don't want to hit your opponent, yet if you want to keep them in block stun, technically, from them holding block, you can use this move as a way of forcing your way in without actually touching your opponent, which means that if they do anything whatsoever and you decide to press a button and they jump or something, then you're going to hit them. Or you can just straight up use it as a way to get that extra step that you need to get your Zempo. Just like Crouching Light Kick, Crouching Light Punish does not chain. So you have to have a very slight delay in your button presses. in order to have the next move come out. Now this move goes into pretty much everything. It's a little bit harder to be far enough away for a far medium punch, but it is possible, right? Same sort of recovery canceling uh, method as crouching leg kick where you walk up for it. From very far away, that is. Um, but, you know, it does go into everything else. Like, every other button can be cancelled off of it, but at that link timing. Um, which is very complicated, I guess. Um, it's the same thing as, you know, crouching like kick. So these two moves are used interchangeably, but, again, there is that higher risk for using the crouching light punch, because it is both high and low parryable. Crouching Medium Punch, on the other hand, is a little bit different. As you can see here, when you do Crouching Light Kick, 
or Crouching Light Punch, Yun is covering Ken's toes. But if you do Crouching Medium Punch, his toes start to peek out. So you're technically having less pushback for Crouching Medium Punch than you do over Crouching Light Kick and Crouching Light Punch. Frame data wise, however, Crouching Medium Punch um, has one frame longer of startup. It's active for exactly the same amount of time, but it also only has one frame of recovery. Now, this move, however, has one less positive frame. So on block, it's plus 12. On hit, it's plus 13. And then on crouch hit, it is plus 14. So this move has a couple different ways that you can use it. There are some characters in the game, like Makoto, where when you're doing pressure, it's a lot easier to go from a crouching medium punch to a fierce punch than it is to go from a crouching light kick into a fierce punch. Because if you get pushed too far away, the fierce punch won't hit Makoto. But if you use crouching medium, kit, uh, medium punch, it becomes a lot easier during your pressure to get that confirm. So instead of doing crouching short, crouching short, crouching short, when you're farther away, it's something like crouching short, crouching medium punch into fierce. Now, obviously that's as a confirmation string, but it's also something that allows you to inch your way forward even more because there's less pushback means that when you recovery cancel it, you are moving forward at a closer distance. So you cover more space. So at the max distance that this can hit, you're going to get slightly more walking distance during the same time frame than you would off of the other two buttons. As a side effect of it being one less positive frame, your opponent becomes throwable one frame earlier. So you can technically Zempo a frame earlier as well. So not only do you get a easier walk up, but you get a sooner time frame at which your opponent becomes throwable. So as a way to get Zempo, it's very, very strong. And in particular against Chun-Li, it can be very, very, very strong because it can set up a frame-perfect Zempo that even if she tries to down-jab you, you will throw her out of it. It's incredibly hard to do, but it is possible. Crouching Medium Punch is different than Crouching Light Punch and Crouching Light Kick, in that it is a move that chains into another option. So, depending on the distance, you know, you can chain into Far Fierce, or you can chain into Forward Fierce, or you can chain into Crouching Medium Kick which allows you to then chain into Crouching Light Kick. You have a lot of different moves that you can use, but it does not chain into itself. There is a way to get around this where you press Light Punch and Medium Punch, or Light, or Medium Punch and Light Kick at the same time. So when you see people doing combo videos, where they're, you know, mashing uh, this for a lot of hits, then that's exactly how it's being done. It's basically tricking the game into thinking that you're doing another move, which you're not. And this is also why you're able to do the crab walk, because you're doing the exact same thing. Now, this move in particular, because of your ability to um, combo very easily, into whatever you want because of how plush you are and the recovery canceling that you get from it, it can be very strong. So even though there are some negatives behind it being high-low parryable, it's less bad than Crouching Light Punch because the Crouching Light Punch won't cancel into something else if your opponent tries to parry. So if your opponent tries to parry and do anything but throw, it will lose. Obviously with some exceptions. We've already talked about recovery cancelling with close standing heavy punch, but the frame data behind it and the usage is what makes this so strong, especially as an Okizeme tool. This move, although its startup is more than most moves in Ganejin at 6 frames, 
means it's active on frame 7. But, as a trade-off, you get 4 active frames. So you can use it as a meaty against your opponent as they're getting up off the ground. Now, this particular move, they can't parry and then throw it inside of Ganajin, like they can outside of Ganajin, because the two hits inside of Ganajin happen almost instantaneously. So your opponent has to parry that twice and then guess between if you want to go high or low or are just going to walk up in Zempo after that. So they can't just parry once and they can't just parry twice before they make a decision. They have to parry more than that. Because this cancels into other moves. So just like Crouching Medium Punch, you're able to cancel into anything else. So with this, you can cancel the first or the second hit. So you can immediately cancel into Crouching Medium Kick. And once the second hit happens, it'll immediately go for that second move. So because, like I already said, your opponent parries, they're forced to parry at least three things. Either, you know, a high, or a low. They can, you know, have to deal with this. They have to deal with you going into a situation where you are close enough to allow a Zempo to work. And that's where Yun is scariest, where his opponent really can't get a full understanding of the, de the next decision that he's going to go for. Especially when it's used as an Oki tool. Because if they know that they have to block this, they know that they're going to have to give you free pressure after the fact. There's no getting around that with how plus this is. Because this move is plus 18. Which is absolutely ridiculous. And on hit, it's plus 20 on crouch. And on standing, it's plus 19. There's really nothing that your opponent can do outside of guess correctly after the first two hits. Which is why on Oki, a majority of the time, unless they have a move that is 100% invulnerable, which even things like Ken's EXDP can lose to things like close standing medium kick, um, it's just not worth taking that risk. Now, positionally, you end up in a very good situation with that recovery cancel, right? And then up close, without even moving, you have access to crouching short, which goes right into pressure. You have access to crouching medium punch, or medium kick. You have access to crouching medium punch. You have access to everything that you want. You know, you also have forward fierce, etc. But one thing is that if you immediately cancel, you get close standing medium punch. So you have to cancel it into something else. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to continue to combo. However, if you tap back, you're able to get a far standing medium punch, which allows you to combo into something else, whether it's far standing heavy punch, forward fierce, whatever. And it also allows you to, you know, sort of put yourself into a semi-frame trap situation as well, where you have to use movement to get back in, which may force your opponent to make a decision to press something or try to jump out. Close standing medium kick is relatively strong. Now, this particular move, when the opponent actually gets hit, is launched, right? But when they block, you are plus 15. Now this move is active for 9 frames, and it only has a startup of 5 frames, which means it's active on frame 6. And the recovery of it is only 1 frame, just like crouching short, and just like uh, crouching jab and crouching strong, and close standing uh, fierce. So the move is very strong. However, at certain ranges, you will not hit and you'll force proximity guard. This is heavily character dependent, and in a lot of cases, you may or may not be able to even combo off of this. But 
as this example, crouching medium punch into standing medium kick does work. And so does crouching light kick into standing medium kick, even against standing opponents, or against standing opponents and not against crouching opponents. So if you get a situation where, you know, you cross your opponent up, or you fake cross up, it can combo. So as you can see here, that dive kick allowed me to combo against my standing opponent into crouching leg kick stand medium kick. There are certain times where this particular move can actually combo. It can be used as a frame trap of sorts. Where, you know, you walk up and you're using close standing medium kick, a medium punch, or a crouching medium punch, or if you do crouching medium kick and then stand medium kick with light kick and medium kick, um, then, you know, that might work against certain characters, it might not against others. But even if you uh, do this, you are susceptible to your opponent hitting you because this is active for, you know, nine frames. So from the time that you press that button and they're blocking, they have 10 frames to punish you, which may be a risk depending on how good their reaction time is. Because let's be honest, reacting to anything that's, you know, under 13 frames of time is nigh impossible. I mean, it's technically possible, but, you know, how often do you see people on reaction blocking dark shot? You get the idea. But, you know, characters like Chun can mash down jab, or certain characters can, you know, press their fastest button and hit you. So you have to be very cognizant of how you want to use this button. But it is very good in situations where you're trying to frame trap your opponent. Where either you get a parry, and then you go into this, or if they're trying to throw instead, you end up knocking them into the air. So if you, regardless of what your opponent wants to do, whether it's jump or press a button, they're going to put themselves in a situation where this can cause them to take a lot of damage. Now this move, just like the others, you can recovery cancel with that, with that walk. So you barely have to move to get that Zempo. Whereas, if you let it complete, you have to, you know, take a step and a half. So, recovery canceling this does still exist. Even though it might not seem like it's useful, it is a, you know, an important part of making sure that your next decision is guaranteed to keep them in block stun if your goal is to go for a Zempo at some point. Now, it goes without saying that close standing medium kick doesn't technically combo into anything, but because of how plus it is, you can still apply pressure to your opponent. Now, the same thing as the close standing heavy punch is required for this if you want to get a far medium punch. So, that is an option. And this is something that a lot of people will do as well. So maintaining your ability to go back into pressure is very easy off of this move. So while although it doesn't combo technically, um, it does quote unquote link while your opponent is blocking into other uh, pressure. So far standing medium punch is good for a bunch of different reasons. It started up as three frames and it's active on frame four, stays active for three frames, and it only has two frames of recovery. On block it's plus fourteen and on hit, whether they're standing or crouching, it's plus fifteen or plus sixteen respectively. So this particular move um, pushes you back very far under the timer when you don't recovery cancel it. When you do recovery cancel it, you stay right under this. You basically don't move, but you still stay far away. Which means that 
when you properly the recovery cancel this, you still need to take a whole step in order to Zempo. So this is why either you recovery cancel and then you go low, or you cancel into another button. So just like crouching medium punch, you can cancel this into whatever you want. If you're too close, however, you'll get close standing heavy punch if you try to cancel it into heavy punch. But if you're far enough away, it'll cancel immediately into far heavy punch. Because the hurt box on this is a little weird. Now, that's another reason why this is so strong. Is because if we turn the hurt boxes on, and we pause and we press the button, we use our frame advanced, the first active frame for this move its hitbox is higher than your character's hurtbox. So cyan is where you can get hit. And the red area is where you'll hit your opponent. So if you're doing crab walk and your opponent is jumping backwards, then you will be able to essentially hit them if they try to you know, jump back roundhouse at the wrong time. So it's a very good tool for that. And it's something that players like show do quite a lot um but as far as its use in pressure situations and with recovery cancels it's very easy to show how good it is now when you can essentially just keep him in pressure forever with just medium punch walk medium punch walk medium punch walk medium punch now this allows you to mix things up by going low or continuing to go high or canceling it into forward medium kick, which is hard to react to. But in general, this particular move is mostly seen used as a cancel. Now, most commonly, at least from what I've seen, at a very high level, it's used as a cancel to Kara Fierce so that they can continue to pressure with other things. Or it's used as a way to set up a frame trap with forward Fierce. In itself can be a frame trap depending on how far away you actually hit your opponent with it because you can just walk forward before your next decision. Now this leaves you open but it is an option that you have. In general, though, if your opponent is crouching and you hit them with this, it can be relatively easily or easy to get a fierce into or a medium punch, far medium punch into another walk, far medium punch. So what this allows you to do is uh, cancel into uh, Kara heavy punch dash punch if you are at the right part of screen. Now, you have to be very close to the corner for something like this to work, because the forward fierce in a lot of cases will push you too far away, because of how far back this pushes you. Right? So, it's useful for that, and it's useful just to walk your opponent down. Because you can literally just keep the same timing and hit them basically forever. So if you can keep this timing, you can very easily go for all the different types of shenanigans that you want to. But this is not the ideal situation to be in because you're too far away for Zempo, right? When your opponent is blocking, you have to take that whole step, even if you recovery cancel it. So this is why normally you'll see this. You'll see far medium into stand light kick, or you'll see far medium into uh, crouch light kick, right? Now, far medium into stand light kick, because of how stand light kick functions, which we'll get over later, makes it easier to get close enough for pressure. But most of the time you'll see stuff like this. But at the highest level, you'll see intentional usage of using the full recovery as a pushback. So they can uh, 
use Kara Fierce or so that they can use uh, Kara Crouching Medium Kick. Medium Punch is also just his Kara, right? So you can farm medium Kara Sand Light Kick if you don't want to walk forward and get it there. You know, you can do Crouching Light Kick. And then you can cancel this against some characters into Kara Fierce. Or you can um, do just a regular cancel into Fierce into Daipon Loop or something. There's a lot of ways that you can use it. Um, you can, from very far away, also cancel uh, forward medium kick, like behind the timer, with this. So that uh, they have to look out for this as well. But, you know, there is setups for a carry universal overhead that you'll see some players like Messer use, or, uh, you know, Yakun will use them sometimes. But for the most part, um, it's mostly just used for the, you know, Daipon loop as the Kara, or to go Kara crushing medium kick, or Kara crushing light kick. Sometimes, like I said, you'll see Kara stand light kick, because it lets you very easily get in against your opponent, but, um, you know, that's also just doable with walking and using fire stand medium punch recovery cancels into stand light kick or crouch light kick and the last way that you can use this is from about three-fourths of the way across the screen where you're under like the opponents or just like this this sort of spacing under the stun bar at the end you tap forward and then you do as far of a forward heavy punch as possible essentially with your Kara. now this particular thing, you can um, walk forward and go for Kara Fierce from very far away as well. Um, or you can do the same thing where you uh, where you whiff Kara Crouching Medium Kick, and then you go forward again. So there's a lot of ways that you can approach your opponent from the ground that's not just um, crab walk or um, this show. So th these are just some tools using Kara to get in. Far Stand Fierce is a very important button to get. And one of the reasons for this is not just because of Daipon Loop, but because of the options that you get off of a recovery cancel from this move. So this move has a 6 frame startup, which means it is active on frame 7. It is active for 2 frames, and it has 4 frames of recovery. So it has one of the longer recoveries. Um, but it does have 15 positive frames on block, and it is plus 16 or 17 on hit, depending on if the opponent is crouching or standing. So this move is one of those moves where... When you get pushed back, you get pushed back far. So when you use this particular move, it's almost always going to end up under the timer. Or further. Because the furthest that you're actually going to ever hit your opponent is basically when you're under the timer, right? And then that pushes you out towards under where the wins column is if your opponent is cornered. Um, so all frames of reference, obviously, are for the corner but it's very important to understand where it actually leaves you because when you do like crouching short short if you delay you can do far standing heavy punch but if you do no delay then you end up with close standing heavy punch and that doesn't work right so but if you recovery cancel the standing heavy punch you end up basically right where you were. Very similar to the far standing medium punch. So without recovery canceling, you end up under the nine of the timer, right? But with recovery canceling, you end up under the wins. 
you end up closer to your opponent. So that recovery cancel gives you that little bit of extra buffer room to do whatever it is that you want to do, whether it's go for a frame trap or not. You can even use the further pushing version, as in letting yourself fully recover, to go for different types of follow-ups, whether it be a frame trap or a way of forcing your way back in with another Kara. Now, there's all sorts of ways that you can get in after the far standing heavy punch. And, you know, you can go right into a forward fierce. You can cancel it right into a crouching medium kick. And depending on your range, will allow you to combo. Or allow you to frame trap. Right? So there's a lot of different ways that this button can be used. Because this move is cancelable into another move, you can dodge things like Dudley's Stand Roundhouse. So if you're trying to get in, you can very easily cancel into something else that may not get hit. Right? And the further you are away, you can completely dodge things and then punish the button that comes out or an attempt of Hugo to SPD, or whatever it might be. Close standing medium punch is a little bit of a weird move. And the reason for this is because although it has a good startup in three frames, so it's active on frame four, it's active for two frames, but it has four frames of recovery, which is actually relatively large. And the reason it's so weird is because on block or on hit, whether they're crouching or standing, this move is only plus four. So plus four might be considered good for a normal, right? Like Crouching Medium Punch here is plus five. And that's one of his best, as far as frame advantage goes, normals outside of Ganajin. But inside of Ganajin, this is, you know, a third or a fourth of what another button might be. So what is its uses, right? You know, the main use is the normal block string. So this means that this move is cancelable. So all sorts of different things that you can do, right? You can even go into crouching medium punch or another standing medium punch if you use medium punch plus light punch. But one of the main ways that you may see Zempo used in some situations is off of this string. Right? Close any medium punch, crouching leg kick, close any medium punch. Now, it's very easy to get Zempo off of this because you're only plus four, your opponent is essentially throwable immediately. Now, this is a vast comparison to like a crouching leg kick because if you try to do the same timing for Zempo, the Zempo will work after the standing medium punch, but it's not going to work after that crouching light kick, because you have three times as much time that you need to wait before they become throwable. However, this move is not really used in this fashion a lot. And the reason for that is because even though it is good for Zempo, because it has such low plus, if your opponent is trying to guard jump or guard throw, you're going to get thrown, or you're going to have them jump away, unless you are preemptively doing something else, as in you are frame trapping them. So a majority of Yuns will use this as the normal pressure. But they'll add delays in, because they don't really need to move all that much, right? They can just sort of let the move happen, and just by delaying a very, very tiny amount, there's a guaranteed frame trap either with the crouching uh, medium, uh, crouching light kick, crouching medium kick, or close standing medium kick. So 
as a frame trap, this move is very strong. And spacing wise, it's not too bad. Right? Especially if you backward recovery cancel. You can go right into the Daipon loop. You can go for a frame trap with crouching medium kick into Kara Fierce. You know. You can delay and then go for crouch medium forward fierce or whatever. Or you can try to get them to do something. Try to get them to throw or whatever and hit them with forward medium kick. It's a very useful tool and it has a lot of purposes to it. And you can make it work however it is that you want to use it. But every different Yun uses this button differently outside of the normal pressure. Outside of Ganajin, Sweep doesn't really do a whole lot outside of get a knockdown, right? You're pushed really far away, and they can quick rise. However, inside of Ganajin, especially mid-screen, there is a lot less pushback than there is outside of Ganajin on the sweep. And then on top of that, if they block it, you're plus five. And if you're mid-screen and you get this, you get left-right mix-ups, which is very powerful, especially against characters that don't have a invincible move on wake-up. And even then, sometimes if you do stuff like this into close stay medium kick or something, and let's say Ken does EXTP, that close stay medium kick is going to win, or it's going to trade, and you're still going to get a launcher. Even though this move is plus 5 on block, and can hit from far away, it has an 8 frame startup, so it's not active until frame 9. And then, it's only active for 2 frames. And then you have a very large recovery window. You know, the recovery of a crouching roundhouse, even in Ganajin, is 9 frames. So, if you whiff it, you're kind of screwed. You can be punished by some players that have ungodly reactions. Is it likely? Absolutely not. But, it is possible. Now, even though this move is good, it hits at all different ranges. So, the, your options change, right? The further you are away the harder it is to continue pressure without doing stuff like Kara Fierce or Kara Crouching Medium Kick. It's very difficult to maintain pressure after this. So when you're doing this up close, depending on the character that you're playing against, like you can do this pressure string like this. We're doing, you know, crouching roundhouse into stand medium punch allows you to get the two hit Zesho that puts you in a frame trap situation against Ken. So it does have its uses, for sure, but it's not something that you really want to be using specifically for this purpose. Your purpose should be to get that knockdown and then get your guaranteed Oki. But as a side effect, throwing it in isn't bad. So if you get it by accident when you're doing a Zempo or something, it's no big deal. Because, you know, you can walk forward in Zempo, or you can go right back into pressure. So regardless of what happens, even execution mistakes can lead to profitable things for you. But for the most part, this move is best mid-screen, and it's best as a chase down with Kara Crouchy Medium Kick. Or Kara, uh, Kara Standing Medium Punch. Now, you can vary it up with Kara Crouchy Medium Kick, or Kara Crouchy Medium Kick into uh, Forward Fierce, right? Depending on your spacing. But it's still a move that gets used very infrequently and mostly only in combos like show will do stuff like this where he'll do three heavy punches or daipon loop into kara crouching roundhouse to get that knockdown for the left right mix-up and this can be good against characters that 
you know, like I said, don't have invincible moves or are not off the ground frame one, like uh, Yuri and Headbutt or Ibuki Hien or, you know, uh, Oro's Chicken, I believe. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can escape this with some characters, but a lot of the characters are sitting ducks. You know, even Shoto's can be. So it's really hit and miss, but this move does have uses, whether it's in a block string as a way to try and get a knockdown, you know, it's great. But it being plus five means that it's a guaranteed frame trap up close, which is something that is very underrated. Inside of Ganajin, at this spacing, where your opponent is towards the opposing corner of the direction that you're going, as in, like, there's less than 30% of the screen behind him, regardless of what side he's going to, you can use uh, Dakai to corner here. And outside of this particular spacing in mid-screen, this button is not really used all that much, because even though it can frame trap very easily, it does not combo unless you are at that spacing. So if you try to do like crouching light kick forward fierce here, and then you go for a carry heavy punch as I show, it doesn't work at all. He's way the hell on the other side of the screen. So it has to be very specific spacing for it to even be worth using in a combo. So in general, when you're using this move, especially during pressure, you have to understand where you are space-wise. Because if you hit this, you know, in a situation where the forward fierce can't connect to a dash punch, then it's just wasted because they end up going flying. And even though you get a guaranteed hard knockdown, unless you hit it really early in your Ganajin, you're wasting your Ganajin. Now, Dakai in general is a relatively good move. However, it does have a very high startup, even higher than pretty much everything else. I'm pretty sure it's the highest startup of anything that's not this. Um, in that it's nine frames of startup, so it's active on frame 10. And then it's active for three frames, but it has a recovery of eight frames. So it has the highest recovery of anything other than Crouch Roundhouse. It's good and bad. Now this particular move though is plus six on block and on hit, obviously, it launches, right? So when your opponent is blocking, it pushes you away really far. Depending on where you are, you get pushed back even further, right? This particular move can be recovery canceled literally just by holding forward during it. It's very easy to recovery cancel this move. So when you do something like this, you can go for a plethora of different choices. And because it's only plus six, you're guaranteed to get a frame trap of sorts. However, um, with proper recovery canceling and spacing, this is a true block string. But it's very difficult to do that as a true block string. Um, and in most situations, you're not going to want to do it as a true block string because you continually push yourself away just to push yourself away again, which doesn't make any sense, especially if your goal is to make them make a decision to try to jump away or press a button. Now, obviously, this move is not cancelable into anything. You have to wait for the recovery. Or, you know, recovery cancel it, right? So, this particular move can't be cancelled into anything, it can't be linked into anything. So the only ne uh, positive benefit that it has is the frame trap that it gives you. Now, to show you an example of the frame trap, Ken here is going to start trying to throw, or crouch tech, um, basically like a second in. So this is why you'll see crouching medium kick forward fierce, crouching medium kick forward fierce, is that they're fishing for the counter hit or the frame trap with the crouching medium kick.
And the same thing exists with, you know, far standing heavy punch and stuff. So this one move itself with the recovery cancel puts you in a situation where you're guaranteed that frame trap if your opponent likes to do something. Now, because of this, though, your opponent can block and then go for, like, a DP and hit your next move. So if you go for, you know, um, if you go for this, there's a chance that Ken is able to DP or super your crouching medium kick. And in most situations, it's going to end up being a super. Um, there is a chance that EXDP might uh, hit it, but it's not going to send you flying way away. So that's not a big deal. You'll be able to punish him for that even if he hits you. But a majority of the cast, um, when they parry this, get a very large punish because you can't cancel it into something. So against Hugo, you're going to get SPD or uh, Super or Gigas or whatever. Against um, Dudley, you're going to get Stand Roundhouse EX, EX Machine Gun Blow. So this particular thing, like this sort of a string, is too predictable as far as timing goes. So it's why you have to, if you're using this move, vary your timing and your decisions as to what comes before and after it. Now, if you do successfully get a Dekai to hit in the corner, congratulations. You have a combo. And this is good because if you're using this move, it opens up a lot of different ways for you to approach your opponent to get an opening. Now, because your opponent is going to be very scared of a frame trap here, you can quite literally just walk up to them and Zempo them. This is something that Ushi does all the time, and it's something I will go over again when I go over frame traps. But in general, this move is only used against your opponent in the corner unless, like I said, mid-screen, you're in a situation where, um, let's jump over Ken, something like this, where when Ken mid-screen ends up under the timer, whether you're pushing him there intentionally with shoulder or something or not, you know, or Daipon loop, whatever it is, right? If you were to walk forward and then go for that, you know, crouching medium kick forward fears, you may be able to get that dash punch. And this is something that uh, players like Issei or Yakun, they go for this a lot. Where other players much prefer to go for the frame traps mid-screen that allow you to go to Daipon loop or something else. So in short, positioning matters most when trying to use the guy. In the corner it's great, in the mid-screen it's very, very spacing specific and usage specific. So crouching medium kick or crouching forward is one frame longer startup than crouching short, right? So there's almost no difference between using the two moves in the vast majority of use cases because most of the cast slows or most of the cast down light punch fastest moves are, you know, five frames or four frames and this has super priority, so you'll win. But it does have four frames of recovery on whiff. Now, on hit, it's plus eight or plus nine, and on block, it's plus seven. So, you know, as you can see the trend, this move is also used for frame traps or to cancel into other things. So the pushback for this move is the same as crouching medium punch. So these two moves can be used interchangeably, but this one is low parry only. Now, because this is low parry only and it's only plus seven, it can be used as a frame trap or it can be used for a couple other things. Um, crouching medium kick cancels into whatever. And depending on the distance you're at, you may be going for a slow keeper gen as a frame trap, 
or you may be going immediately to Heavy Punch, so you can go for a Daipon loop. You may be going for Forward Fierce, or you may be doing Crouching Medium Kick, Crouch Light Kick. And because this is a cancel, just like this is, and just like this is, you'll end up beating that Karakusa situation that I was talking about, where the Makoto guest parry is the first hit, they go for Karakusa, the second hit hits them, and then you can confer them into whatever. Right? It's a wonderful situation to have happen. Um, but just like the Crouching Medium Punch spam, you can do Crouching Medium Kick spam. But the more important part is that every other button besides Crouching Medium Kick can cancel into Forward Medium Kick. So you actually have to delay in order to get the Forward Medium Kick until after the recovery. Unless you press Medium Kick and Light Kick at the same time. Based purely on distance, from this range, you know, Crouching Light Kick won't hit, Far Medium Punch isn't going to hit, so your only real choices are Forward Fierce, Stand Fierce, Shoulder, Forward Medium Kick, and then Crouching Medium Kick and Crouching Brownhouse. Now, Crouching Medium Kick at this distance allows you to get in relatively easily with Kara Cancels and other things. You know, you can go right into uh, Shoulder in order to, you know, recovery cancel the Shoulder and go right into Pressure. That's fine. Um, you know, you have this sort of frame trap, which allows you to go for different things as well. There's a lot of ways that this button can be used, and the cancels that you get up close also make it very strong. But it's mostly used as a tool when you're further away. Because even though this is a frame trap tool, your goal is to um, stay close to your opponent, right? So there's almost no difference between using this and using this. Close to any medium punch versus crouching like uh, medium kick if your goal is Zempo. Because you're essentially put at the same spacing and there's such an insignificant amount of frames that you still get Zempo at essentially the same time. But theoretically, this is more positive, so you have a little bit more wiggle room as far as frames of your walking. But in reality, it's just that this at you know mid-range distances is a lot easier to convert into damage, where you're able to get your you know crouching medium kick forward fierce, or you're able to get your you know, crouching medium kick here, where your crouching light kick would require a step forward. It's not always the smart decision to take that step, because, you know, your opponent may parry it, your opponent may do something. Just from having that extra time for you to move gives them the opportunity to parry in some situations that might require a red parry. So that's why this button can be good at, you know, a little bit further ranges. But obviously, just from the distance that it's used at and how far it goes, that should go without saying. But more often than not, you see this as the way to go into uh, Fierce Punch or Forward Fierce Punch or cancel into Crouching Light Kick or something up close. It's not really used for a whole lot of other things in practical use. Um, Close to any medium punch and standing light kick sort of take that uh, spot. However, if your goal is to frame trap your opponent, having that extra frame of startup can actually be useful. Because it gives your opponent that extra frame to start to press a button, try to jump, you know, gives you the opportunity to hit them out of their choice. Now, obviously there are few and far between situations where this is the case, but, you know... If if you do anything that ends in close to any medium punch, it may be easier to go into a crouching medium kick as a frame trap because, you know, this is plus four and this is, you know, a four frame startup. So if, even if you do this at perfect timing that is not a cancel, you're going to end up in a situation where your opponent could have pressed something and had one frame of it come out. So as long as, you know, you've properly conditioned them, um, it can be a very good tool.
but that's another video that I'll be talking in depth about conditioning and ways to approach Ganejin. Stand Roundhouse is pretty good. If it hits your opponent and you're not able to actually combo off of it, well, then you get a hard knockdown. However, you can combo off of it into medium punch shoulder on a majority of the cast. Some Yuns do like this button during their pressure mid-screen, such as Ushi in the Makoto matchup, but it's one of those things that you use few and far between. It's something to keep your opponent on your toes. And the reason for this is because it does have a very large startup, but you can get away with using it after some frame traps. Or just off of moves that are very plus because of how much advantage you have to go into something like that with a slight delay. Now, when using this, when your opponent blocks, you're plus 7. Plus 7 is good, and plus 7 basically makes this a frame trap, right? But you have to be very close in order to recovery cancel this to a distance that is worthwhile. Because at the distance that you're going to be using this, you're pushed all the way back under the timer. And you're barely to the front of the timer with the recovery cancel. So this means you have far fierce, forward fierce, this, and then walk forward crouch medium kick. You also have the ability to um, Kara Sweep, which is something that I've seen Ushi and Sho both do. There's a lot of choices that you have, but for the most part, because of how far away you are, you're very much limited as far as what your decisions can be, right? Which is why the most often choice people do is the shoulder. Now, in the corner, you can actually confirm into this button as well. So, you know, if you're going for normal pressure and you think that they're going to block it and you just hard commit to something like this, it's not the biggest deal in the world. KO does this. It's not something that you see very commonly, but he does do it. But honestly, outside of, you know, Ushi doing this sometimes against Makoto, it's not really all that used. And it's for good reason. The pushback is too far, and although it is technically a frame trap, you risk a lot, especially mid-screen against your opponent, to do something like that. And using that stand roundhouse in the corner, there are other better buttons that could be used to also set up frame traps that don't have as large of an inherent risk. Standing leg kick in Ganajin pushes you back a little further than other buttons for lights, right? You're still very close to Ken. Oh, your shadows are just barely touching now, right? So with this, if you hold forward, your recovery canceling right into their face, basically as close as you can possibly get. So this is why, as a Zempo setup, it's very strong. Now, this move in particular is very similar to the crouching leg kick in that you can't cancel into anything else, right? You can link. So the move is three frames, start up. It's active for two, and it has one frame of recovery. So it's great in that regard. And then on block, it is plus nine, on hit, it is plus nine against standing, and I'm pretty sure it's plus ten against crouching, because it is easier to um, get this against a crouching opponent compared to a standing opponent. Now, this move, even though it can combo, is a little bit hard. Um, because of that light timing. But it does mean that you're able to frame trap with the standing light kick as well. So not only is it good to go for the Zempo, but it gives you a great frame trap. 
frame trapping is very easy with this move, however, it requires hard commitment into something else. But, it's very easy to get parries after this, whether you hit them or whether they're blocking. If they're just, you know, mashing buttons trying to throw you or whatever. So, characters like Chun that like to down jab, you know, or Remy with their uh, standing light kick, which is also down parryable, there's a lot of choices that some characters have that you can build that parry in. And this puts you at perfect distance on block to be able to, you know, parry both directions, whether you recovery cancel it or not. Right? So it's very easy in that regard. So when you're actually going for frame traps here, it can be to set up parries, or you can hard commit to the decision that you're doing after by adding a very slight delay after your light. Whether it's a second one into a crouching light kick, or if it's a this into a micro step forward into normal pressure. Oops. Everything works. And this tool is great for Zempo, it's great for frame traps, and it's one of those things where at the very highest level, the opponent will know what this means. It, they know what they can expect. So, you know, you can do this and then back off. And then, you know, try to hit them with Fire Sand Heavy Punch or do something else. Right? Doesn't really... you don't have to go for those frame traps. But when you watch some players like Yakun play against MOV, and MOV knows that this is baiting that down jab, and then Yakun's just parrying, it becomes second nature to change how the rock, paper, scissors works at a high level, right? Inside of Ganesian. And that's an entire other video that I'll be covering shortly, but. That's just a taste of, you know, explaining the metagame behind certain decisions in Ganesha. This move is very good. Now, it's good because it does a lot of damage, actually. If you hit someone with four of these and one sitting, you're going to do more damage than a normal Zempo Ender is going to. So, as far as damage goes, any time that you can get one of these in before you get your Zempo tension, it's just free damage. So it can make or break, you know, some wins. And there are players at a very high level, such as Issei, that use this masterfully. And they can even make it work against some of the best reactionary players in the world, like MOV. But it does have its downsides. So forward medium kick is a good move, but it has its downsides. It's 13 frames to start up, which means that it's technically humanly reactable, right? Same thing with Universal Overhead, also 13 frames. Dart shot, whatever. Now, even though that's the case, this move is very hard to react to, because you can add it wherever you want, right? You can just do it in their face. You can walk back and do it from far away. There's all sorts of moves and combinations that you can cancel it off of. Right? So there's a plethora of ways that you can put it in your pressure, and there's a lot of ways that you can make it work. But there are characters that can punish you hard for it. Because it's negative even on hit against standing opponents it's negative three on hit against crouching opponents is negative two on hit and against standing characters who block it it's minus four so you would think oh this move is terrible it's negative in a special situation that everything else is plus and you want to be plus 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 well ibuki is plus 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 on everything 
except for a couple things. And those couple things are how she gets a lot of her damage. It's from taking calculated risks. And the characters, or the players that use this well, use it as a calculated risk. Now, characters like Hugo, or Chun-Li, or Q, if they block this standing, you can die. If they get hit with this standing, you can die. Hugo can gigas you. You know, in this exact situation here, I'm going to activate, and I'm going to do forward medium kick, and then I'm going to mash down light kick, so that I get it frame one. Ken's down medium punch hits me, because of the startup of the down light kick is two frames. So Ken can use down medium punch, or Dudley could use down medium punch, hit me in the face, confirm into super, and then my Gideon is wasted. Right? Well, you can whiff punish it after a delay. You can um, force Ken into a situation, or Dudley, where they have to hard commit to this, right? After this, they have to choose to press that button because they believe you're going to press something that's negative enough that you're not going to delay. And in a lot of cases, you're definitely not going to. But against those players, you have to know that option parrying exists. So Ken's will try to DP after this. They'll try to do down medium punch. A lot of different characters will try different things. And you have to be ready for that if you're looking to use this. But, you know, it's sort of the black sheep where because of how much damage you can get from it and how deceptive it can be, it's very strong. But you have to know when, where, and how to use it. And essentially, it makes a pseudo frame trap in the fact that even though you're negative, you can control the next decision. There are three different shoulders, light, medium, and heavy. Light has a seven frame startup, so it's active on frame eight. It hits for nine frames, or it's active for nine frames, and it has eight frames of recovery. And on block, it's plus five. Medium has one more frame of startup, one more frame of active, and two more frames of recovery. So eight, ten, and ten respectively. But it also is plus five. And then heavy punch is ten frame startup, so it's active on frame eleven has 11 frames of hit, or active frames, and it has 12 frames of recovery. Um, it's also plus 3 on block. So there's no negative uh, shoulders while you're in Gnajin. So the pushback for this move, even if you recovery cancel it, doesn't really change. You know, you get pushed under the uh, secondary win if you don't hold forward, and if you hold forward, you also are in the same place. But, you can tap forward and move just a slight bit forward at the end to recovery cancel it, but in most cases it's not really worth it. You're going to be holding forward anyway for something else. Now, Light Punch Shoulder does not launch. Both Medium Punch and Heavy Punch do launch your opponent. So, the Light Punch Shoulder is used a lot less. Um, and the reason why that is, is because, in general, Unless you're using moves that have very low plus, like close and medium punch, then, you know, you're not going to need to worry about this. So, if you were to cancel close and medium punch into light punch shoulder, there's a chance that it will combo, right? However, it does not combo into the medium punch one, because close to any medium punch is, you know, 8 frames of startup, and this is only plus 4. You see the dilemma. So, if you are trying to go for pressure, and you still want that frame trap off of a shoulder or something, you have to use a light punch. But, if you were to use, you know, crouching light kick, it will combo into a heavy punch shoulder. Whereas, standing light kick will not, because this move is plus 9, and the startup for heavy shoulder is 10. So you have to 
basically frame perfect or within one frame of leeway do a medium punch shoulder in order to combo into a launcher and this is another thing is that all shoulder in general or specials in general can be cancelled off of your light buttons whereas normals you cannot right doing crouching light kick into a crouching medium punch doesn't work but doing crouching light kick cancelled into a shoulder absolutely does work so shoulders push your opponent very far so one shoulder here pushes him under the timer whereas crouching light kick light kick fierce also will push him under the timer so doing something like to push your opponent away pushes him back relatively far right he's under the edge of the uh, area where the screen will move if you go to the other side And he goes to that within two shoulders, essentially. So if you want to get, you know, a forward fierce into a Kara dash punch or something, it can be relatively easy off of shoulders because of the positional advantage that it gives you mid-screen. However, if you are not doing things fast enough because of how small the positive frames are after your shoulder, your opponent may be able to jump away. So because this does launch, you know, some players will wait, and, wait until the absolute last second when you might go for a Zempo and then do a delay into a shoulder to launch you and, you know, get as much damage as possible. Because in these situations, doing, you know, crouching like kicking the Dakai, you're only going to get another Dakai into a dash punch rather than like a second shoulder into a Dakai into dash punch. So you get a little bit more damage for ending it in some in in this fashion this move does have issues though like if you're trying to catch your opponent jumping after this particular move it's not going to be easy because you know if your opponent blocks your first one and then is already holding up back afterward they're not going to be able to get hit by another shoulder But if they're trying to hold up in the middle of your pressure, obviously they're going to get hit. But even though this shoulder may hit them, you have to do other things in order to stop them from jumping. Like hitting them out of the startup of a jump with a crouching medium kick. Or hitting them out of the startup with a far standing heavy punch. Now if you try to hit your opponent with a forward fierce, if they jump, it's going to hit them. But if they don't jump, it may not. So if we manage to hit our opponent out of the startup of a move, that's great, right? But there's a chance that our forward fierce is going to end up in a situation where it doesn't actually beat our opponent's move. Specifically against characters with faster down jabs or, you know, further hitting pokes. Like, Hugo or something. So there's a risk with using this move. And it has to be only really used if your opponent you think is going to jump. Or if it's a character with very slow normals that you can abuse this with. Otherwise, using Standing Fierce is going to cover the same options, and it's going to give you better options as far as what you can do next. However, this move automatically going into another frame trap, if you're able to make them block, Can be incredibly strong right so there's that if you are using heavy punch shoulder however because it is three frames of positive instead of five you end up in a very precarious situation they're able to jump your forward fierce but they will get hit by your far fierce so using far fierce is a hundred times better because you don't risk your opponent ever jumping away, regardless of the type of thing you use. Now, your opponent jumping doesn't matter if you are going for, um, like, a crouching medium kick or whatever. But if you're going for another shoulder, it does matter. Now, if your opponent is blocking, and you're using medium punch shoulder, then you can use forward medium kick 
as a way to hit them on their way up. However, if you're using Heavy Punch Shoulder, then you cannot. So there are some things that do and do not work based on what you're doing because of how many extra plus frames you get from the Medium Punch Shoulder. This is why a majority of the time inside of Ganajin, you're going to see people using the Heavy Punch more than anything else, or uh, the Medium Punch. Because the Medium Punch gives you five frames, which gives you the exact same frame traps, regardless of what you're doing, as you would the Heavy Punch, but you have less of a risk of your opponent actually like getting out of the situation. So if they choose to jump or press a button or something, then their medium punch shoulder is going to be better. Now if your opponent is going towards the mid-screen, they're going to be jumping another shoulder usually, right? Or they're going to be jumping your forward fierce. And even if you're able to hit them out of the air, unless you're already under the middle of this, you're not going to get that Karazesho, so it doesn't really matter. So this is why you have to use other buttons. So, so there's one thing that you can do, really. So if you're going towards mid-screen, you can use Heavy Punch. You can hit them out of the startup of their jump. Or you can continue with a delayed dash punch. So if you delay your Heavy Punch so that it hits them you know, a little bit later and you're looking for a frame trap like usual, then you're going to end up with about the same situation, where you're forced to hit them in the air, as you would in the corner. So unless you're hard committing to um, a fierce punch immediately afterward, you may not hit their jump. Because the only other thing that you can do is try to walk forward and do a far standing medium kick. Because forward medium kick's not going to work. And if you're doing a uh, far standing medium punch, it's not going to connect either. Unless it connects on the ground. But getting that to work isn't always possible. So you have to walk forward with like a medium punch into another shoulder because going for basically anything else isn't viable. So that button isn't all that strong. And you can trap your opponent with the crouching medium kick. Right? So depending on where you are on the screen, crouching medium kick forward fierce may be a viable option. 
but after the forward fears, your opponent gets another chance to jump away. So that's why you'll see um, other players do something like crouching medium kick into Kara Fierce. Or they'll end up doing, um, you know, crouching medium kick into shoulder or something like that. Because those are the easiest things to do. So it's either going to be far fierce or crouching medium kick in most of these cases, or it's going to be walk up zempo or walk up something. In which case you can react to your opponent, you know, jumping away if that if you're good at that sort of thing. Right? Obviously they can parry on the way down. Um, but you can walk forward and hit standing medium kick and catch them. It is something that I've seen other players do. It's not, not consistent, but it is possible. So palm is cancelable off of, you know, lights, just like shoulder. Um, and this move is actually very, very, very fast as far as the recovery goes. It only has one frame of recovery. And it's plus 13 on block. Does that sound familiar? They're very similar to crouching light kick. However, this move has 10 frames of startup, meaning it's active on frame 11. It's active for six frames, but that one frame of recovery can be a godsend. Because you can whiff palm and then go right into something else. And that palm may cover you know, a larger variety of things. Palm can be used as a frame trap. Now, it's best off of moves like far, uh, standing leg kick or crouching leg kick, right? But it can also be used as a frame trap off of close standing light punch because that move is only plus four. So you'd end up hitting your opponent seven frames later. And this means that depending on your pushback or the type of character or player that you're playing against, it can be an effective tool. It's not something that I suggest to use very often, but it is an option. Um, but, you know, the hurt box for this is actually relatively far where if you're under the winds, it will hit your opponent. So you can use like short, short, short into palm, you know, to hit your opponent or short, short into a micro step back or something to make that space where they may or may not want to press a button. And depending on the character, it may be worth it. But, you know, worst case scenario is that this puts them into proximity guards, so you just get to walk up and throw them. Which can be an amazing tool. But, you know, the other ways that you can move forward afterward make this very strong. You know, using it as that frame trap tool or a confirmation tool of some sort um, at particular junctions in your Ganesian bar means that you can get a lot of damage off of a combo if that confirm actually works or a pseudo confirm I guess because you are intentionally delaying things so that you can use that palm and potentially have it hit and if it doesn't hit then you get to make your own decisions after that you know walk up standing light kick afterward or walk up crouching light kick they're all really viable options because of how plush you are you can also you know delay and make these frame traps work for you just like you could off of a crouching light kick. But because you're further away, you have more options as far as playing with space to make your opponent, you know, try to jump either out of the corner or back in the corner so that when you are moving forward, them having to deal with that walk up Zempo may or may not be something they're willing to do. But you can hit your opponent if they're trying to jump and all that stuff as well.
If your opponent does want to jump, you know, there's not a whole lot that you can do to stop them outside of using your frame traps. But, depending on the situation, you know, you may be able to use forward medium kick or something to catch them on the way up. Or you may be able to use uh, far fierce to catch them on the way up. Whether it's out of the beginning of the jump animation, or right when they are going into the sky. This is actually one of the places where forward fierce works really well, because of the startup time. You end up hitting them as they're trying to hold up. Although forward fierce, you know, is sort of like an auto win of sorts, um, if your opponent blocks, it's not bad either because you get that other frame trap off of the forward fierce that we already talked about before. But in general, it's the easiest thing for your opponent to expect. So characters like Dudley may be option parrying high after a palm. And this is why, you know, being able to go low is very important too. Because you can frame trap with the low, like I just did here. Or even if you don't get the frame trap timing, you can cancel it into something else like Kara Fierce, or Forward Fierce, or Far Fierce, and then go from there. Or you can just use the Crouching Medium Kick into a Recovery Cancel to start to walk your way forward. There's a lot of, a lot of ways that this can be used, and just because you're so far away doesn't mean that your opponent is not going to give you opportunities to get out. So them jumping out is very difficult for them to do, and after Palm, you know, you have quite a bit of options that they have to respect. But because Palm puts you so far away and out of Zempo range, it's not used very often. Frame traps come in two different fashions. You're either particularly using moves to garner a reaction of a jump so that they're trying to jump your Zempo. You're using a set of normals that will condition your opponent to want to jump, right? Or you're using normals that allow, allow a small enough gap that if they're trying to mash or if they're trying to make a decision that is not, you know, block, then you're going to hit them when they make that decision. Now, every character has different options available to them, but leaving crouch block or leaving crouch in order to do that is a huge risk because when you actually get hit low and a majority of Yun's pressure strings come from lows outside of close standing medium punch, at least up close, you have a lot to worry about. Now every character has different normals that are good to contest with or are worth pressing. You know. Ken's down jab might not be the best down jab in the world, but his down medium punch is great and can confirm it to super. It's not something that the Ken might want to do all the time, but it's something that you have to be cognizant of as an option. He has DP. He can try to contest with super after particular strings that I already talked about, like using crouching medium kick or, you know, after a forward fierce, they can just let it rip. But, you know, characters like Chun-Li... They have a great down jab, which beats throw. It's definitely going to beat your Zempo. And if you try to do, like, Senpu or forward medium kick, she can do it as a reaction to it. So, you know, every character has different spacings that you have to worry about that person trying to press buttons. Like Hugo, his crouching light kick reaches really far to the point where, like, if I'm Yun here, then... His crouching light kick hits me, like, right about here, right? So I have to be more cognizant against a Hugo because if he's pressing down light kick and I'm, you know, doing forward fierce, then my next choice has to be something that can whiff punish that if that's something that I think is going to happen. Because hitting the startup of it, depending on the distance you are away from your opponent, may not be a viable thing. So let's say you're trying to do whatever. You're trying to hit them with your forward fierce, right? There's a chance here that because of the startup of forward fierce that you're just going to get interrupted. 
because of how long it takes. It's your fat is your longest um, normal outside of you know forward medium kick. So when doing things, you have to add delays at the correct time and at the correct spacings. Otherwise, you're just gonna run into things. So from you know this far away. You know, whiff punishing is going to be more of a thing. But they may only press, you know, the button once. Right? So, being able to understand the spacing of things can help you quite a bit. So, adding delays is very important, especially during your normal pressure. So, delaying after your forward fierce punch means that you can reliably, you know, make your opponent make a guess. So if you are, you know, going for something like this, you're either going to be whip punishing or you're going to be hitting the startup of the next move. Now regardless of which one is actually happening doesn't matter right as long as that button gets pressed or they're trying to jump or whatever it may be now the further you are away the easier it is to deal with your opponent sort of jumping because you can dash punch you can sort of wait for them to land or almost land and do like far medium kick you know you can contest with forward fierce there's a lot of things that you can do when they jump so adding these delays to encourage your opponent to try to get away is all the better. Now, your delays can come off of anything, no matter how you know less positive they are than other things. You're going to need to mean, uh, include more of a delay for things that are higher in positive frames. So like Stand Fierce or Crouching Light Kick. Oops. And you can also, you know, delay and then add in the parry before your next move. All these sort of things, you know, gel together. Now, the decisions that your opponent is going to be making, it doesn't matter how they're trying to get away, if they're trying to interrupt you, whatever the thing is. Like, as long as they're not Chun-Li down jab fast you're going to beat all of their options unless it's invincible. So, unless you're playing against a character with a highly invincible super, you don't really have to worry since all of your stuff has super priority. So against characters like Ken, or Yang, or, you know, a churning Hugo, you may have to worry, or a Dudley. But... In some cases, you're going to be able to hit the Dudley out of the startup. In some cases, um, you're going to be able to hit other characters out of startup of their moves. But, you know, in certain situations, characters like Ibuki are going to try to get out of the corner with a Hien or something. So, like, adding that extra little bit of space for them to get hit while they're trying to do their Hien is, like, all you really need. But, in the end... You know, adding these delays, regardless of when they come, what you're doing, can make all the difference in the world. Especially if you're trying to, like, sit at a range and make them think about what you're doing. So, like, when, when you're doing things, you can just sit at this range and not really have to worry about your opponent contesting sometimes. So, like, if you want to take a second before you make your next decision doesn't really, you know, hurt. But adding too many delays is bad. Right? Now, these delays are also sort of can be timed in a way that would encourage your opponent to think that you're going to Zempo. So the main goal is to, you know, use all of your tools to make your opponent want to get away, to think that they are safe to make a decision. And these delays 
can basically thwart all of their decisions if done correctly. So very simply, there are going to be situations where you are required to walk. Now this is a, its own built-in delay because it's off of things that are very plus, right? You have to walk here unless you do crouching medium kick or standing heavy punch, right? So it's using that, okay, you know that I have to walk in order to continue pressure after it's fully recovered. How are you going to contest, to contest this? Are you even going to? Or are you just going to sit there and block? So knowing that, you know, your opponent knows you need to move is big. And then sometimes, just in general, adding movement adds delays of its own. So it never hurts to sometimes add random movements or, you know, buffer parries or whatever it is that you want to do into your pressure. Now, throughout, I've gone over a lot of these frame traps while going over the different buttons, but this is just a once over. So, forward fierce. When you recovery cancel this, very slight delay in your next decision, and it is a guaranteed frame trap. Standing late kick, with a delay or an option parry afterward, that gives you the timing that you need for that very specific trap that you're looking for. And doing something like this, or something like this, something like this, you know, the less positive that you are, the better it is for your frame traps. Something like this, where you have the ability to go like this, or you have the ability to let it fully recover and then care of yours. You technically have forward medium kick because it's a rock, paper, scissors situation that you're in advantage of. So even it, though you are negative in most matchups, you are technically at advantage because you control the pace and not every character has something that can interrupt Yun when he tries to go for that crouching light kick or, you know, fire stand medium punch or whatever it is that he wants to do. In general, when you're using these moves that are, you know, positive, but they're not overly positive as far as their frame data goes on hit and on block, you have to understand what your next decisions can be, right? Because knowing that this works, you know, as a frame trap, but not a combo is important. Because yeah, you can hit your opponent and they might try to think that you're going to go for a Zempo, right? But at the same time, you know, that micro step that you would go for the Zempo is also a way that you can have a very specific time that you're going to be going for a frame trap. And this applies to all of the moves that are, you know, plus but not overly plus, where they're not like plus 13 where you don't have to add that extra delay. When you're doing things like fierce, forward fierce, fierce, walk forward, crouching, light kick, this gives you three chances to confirm into damage. This hitting your opponent in the corner, this comboing into uh, crouching, light kick, so if we were to do this into walk forward, crouching, light kick, as you can see here, it combos. So you this and a recovery cancel into this and it gives you three opportunities essentially to hit your opponent so your goal after this crouching leg kick here is to either walk forward and go for zempo oops something like this right or you're going to continue with that second crouching light kick so that you can get, you can see the confirm, right? So you can get the stand fierce into shoulder or you can get, you know, that into a forward fierce. Depends on how good you are at confirming your pressure. 
but that is something that Ushi uses a lot. So the last thing is the show confirm. And that's using um, Crouching Medium Kick Kara Fierce as a way to get a confirm. Now, if you're doing this properly, um, you can actually keep him in block stun forever. But it gives you two different windows of opportunity to add a delay. You can either go right into a delayed Kara Fierce after the first Kara Fierce, or you can delay the Crouch Medium Kick. Right? And then the last opportunity is that you use the Crouching Medium Kick to bait your opponent to press something as you would have to, you know, walk forward or go for, you know, something. Because this, in general, usually means, you know, forward fierce or something, you may want to make them try to parry. But, you know, this into a delay is going to put them in a situation where they have to guess. So you can either delay here, or you can delay after the fierce. And you can also, you know, add in forward fierce if you want to, by doing, like, which is probably the more common way that it's used. But you can um, go from far medium punch as well. And depending on the character, it's, uh, it's pretty easy to do. Um, 